All right. Hi, friends. So I prefaced last week saying this week we're going to hit four aspects that every Christian kid needs in their life to really help equip them to not stumble or waver in their faith in their teenage and college years. There's way too many kids getting to that age and disappearing from church or questioning their faith or just turning their back on it altogether. And a big part of that is because we have not equipped them with a real foundation that comes from four things. And that's what we need to be focusing on as churches. I know there's lots of other things that can take up our time and steal our focus and and feel like they're so important because everybody else is doing these things and we can't be the one church not doing them. But if you look at it, the stats are 6%, I believe it is, kids stick with their church through their teen and college years. If you want that to be your statistics for your church, then go ahead and do what everyone else is doing because it must be important. That way you can have 6%. I don't know about you, but I think God's plan for your church is so much bigger than that. You see the kids that are coming and God is blessing your church with, with the potential they have in them and the hunger to really Be who God's created them to be. Don't let them lose that. And it takes these four things. I don't have time today to hit all four of them. So we're going to hit one. And the first one is having a family that goes after God, that lives spiritual lives outside of church. I know you're like, well, we're churches. We're not doing that. Um, we need to find a way. You have to have a way that you're equipping parents to be the spiritual leaders in the home and not just having church be the only spot where any spiritual activity happens. And sadly, that's true for way too many Christian families. And so when the kids see that it's only at church that you do anything supernatural, They think of it like um, only at school do I do English or Spanish. I don't do that in the rest of my life. That's just a kind of fun extra. I don't take photography class or or whatever it might be. And so uh, they don't see how their Christianity is supposed to influence the entire rest of their life. So they don't. Kids need great examples of the real life application to the spiritual principles and training that they receive. And the first place they look to is their family to show them how to live out their faith. The kids are with our, us as children's pastors at church, maybe let's say three hours a week at the most. That'd probably, probably be high end of average, but they're with their parents much, much more. So how can we equip parents and families to live spiritually at home? First of all, we got to take the pressure off them and let them know that they don't have to be uh, graduates of some four-year seminary in order to be able to lead their home spiritually. Their kids aren't looking for them to teach them a a four-hour theological dissertation on the exo Jesus of, of whatever. That, that's not what they're looking for. Uh, they don't need their parents to be perfect and knowing everything about spiritual stuff, but they want to see them try. They want to see them be honest when they win and when they miss it. And those real conversations is what will stir these kids up to then feel confident to give it a shot also. Most of all, kids really just want to be included in the family's spiritually journey together as a unit, not each one on their own, doing their own thing, learning their own thing, but come together as a family unit and focus on what God's calling is on their family. I know some of you are talking, we, we, we don't ever talk like that at church. 
It's time to change then. All right, that's why Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 through 21. Wait, I got to show you. I got this slick little overlay. Deuteronomy 11, 18, 21 says, You shall therefore impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontals on your forehead. Wait, back to me for a sec. I love how it kicks off with saying, First of all, you catch it. Don't try to be the spiritual leader into something that you're not experiencing at all. And so you're grabbing your Bible. You're like, okay, uh, kids, they say at church, we're supposed to be um, uh, reading something to you from the Bible. So um, here we go. Then Daniel answered the king. You may keep your gifts yourself and give your rewards to someone else. So uh, kids, let's look for a way to give something away today like Daniel and then go on with your day. It's not what they're looking for. They're looking for you to begin to dive into your word, into the spirit as parents, as leaders of in churches, teaching them how to do that first. And then it goes on to verse 19. You shall teach them to your sons and sons. There would be kids talking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that your days and the days of your sons may be multiplied on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens remain above the earth. I love that. Let's look at the promise. If you do these things, not only will you enjoy a long, abundant life, your kids will. And and it's a promise of God, but it's conditional on you doing the first things. One, helping the parents really learn how to grow spiritually themselves. Get into the word with a purpose of finding how to lead their family. Get into their their prayer closet and begin praying for their family and and developing their own relationship with Christ and then teaching their kids. What are the four things? This is what I love this. The four things to lead them, right? When you sit in the house, hey, your free time, make sure some of your free time revolves around applying what you're doing to the scriptures. And if you're not sure, do a quick web search on openbible.info. What does the Bible have to say about gardens? What does the Bible have to say about sports? What does the Bible have to say about? And God will show you something, even if it's through that, if you don't know. So when you sit in your house, what's your free time look like? When you walk along the road, what does that look like for us now? It's our drive time. So we got our free time. We got our drive time. What's the next thing? When you lie down at bedtime, when you rise up. Breakfast time or meal time, you could actually say. I'll expand that to meal time. If those are all times that traditionally will have the greatest chance of being with our kids or our parents in our churches will be with their kids during their uh, free time, the Saturdays, whatever it looks like. Drive time. You know, parents shuttle their kids all over. Let's make that intentional for them. Let's give them tools to make it. Uh, spiritual growth time as a family. When they lay, lie down, give them some tools that equip them for bedtimes to lead their home spiritually. When you rise up, give them stuff to talk about when they're at the table. And then also things to hang around the home because that verse ends with write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. So hang them on your Doors on so you're seeing it going in, going out, and then on your gates or posted in the car somewhere. These things equip or these things are what we should be focusing on as a church so that our families, our parents, and our kids can enjoy a long life in Him. Not being swayed to the right or left because they have a strong family unit that's pursuing God together. 
and you can be a big part of that. Now, I know a lot. some of you have been using the uh, Root Kidman, or it used to be called Kid Nation curriculum, and we didn't have tools like this. We're actually developing tools like this right now. As we do them in Root Bible Academy, as we equip parents there, we're also adding them into the curriculum. So all of the Root Kidman uh, curriculum will soon have parent talk tools for bedtime banter, for uh, car chats, for table talks. And, and a family mission or a family game, family encounter, something to do together in your free time to refocus on him and uh, review the things that God had been speaking to your kids at church services. So check out rootkidman.com because these are parts of it. This is, and I think that's exciting because now you'll be able to equip parents to and families to grow together spiritually or we're just about to launch a coupon code so that uh if you choose to check out with root bible academy for all of the families in your church you'll get a custom coupon code that you can share with your families and they all would get uh, root bible academy classes for free and they can jump in live and have the same uh, or similar things being taught to them that they're also learning at church that help them grow spiritually between Sundays. Plus the parent tools are available again there for the parents to lead their home spiritually and be comfortable doing it because it's a consistent tool they know how to use. And if it's not that, if you don't want to use Root Kidman, I'm not saying that's the only option. I'm saying you got to find a way to equip families to grow together spiritually outside of church so that they don't live one way at church in a totally different way the rest of the week. If you can help families grow spiritually outside of church together like this, it's a big, big, big hook for kids to not wander or waver in their faith as teens and college kids. Now, tomorrow I'm going to hit something that is crazy important to kids and with a little bit of coaching on, on their choices, this can set them up for a life that holds them accountable to Christian living so they don't want to wander or waver in their faith. So that's coming up tomorrow. I'm going to share with you. I'm so I can't, I want to jump into it right now. I just, I know I can't. So check that out tomorrow and I will see you all later.